You know what is ray marching, you know how to draw primitive shapes, how to properly shade them, how to deform the shapes along with different modeling techniques, you know how to create more complex shape with operators. That's all cool but the question is how do you set different colors for different shapes? We are only using a single shader and material so is it even possible? What about texturing the shapes? Today I will show you exactly how to tackle those problems in the brand new episode of Ray Marching for Dummies series. Ok so I had this shaded from the previous episode. In the SDF function I am drawing these three shapes. Now let's say I want to assign different color for each shape. Right now the best thing I can do is, in the fragment processor I can set the color in albedo. But that will apply to each and every shapes. So to fix this, I need an ID for my shapes. For that, let's update the SDF function. I want the SDF function to also return an ID for the shape along with the closest distance. I can of course change the return type to vector2, but let me just define an output parameter. That way, SDF function will be more readable. So this mat id is an output parameter, it will return the value to the calling code. Don't worry, it will be more clear in a minute. Then here before I return the distance, I will check if my distance is equal to sphere distance. Then I will go mat id equals 1. And this is not very readable so let's declare some constants. Then instead of 1, I will go mat sphere. Then else if my distance is equal to box distance, I will go mat id equals mat box. Then once more else if distance is equal to capsule distance, then I will go mat id equals mat capsule. And in case you are wondering why I am using this else if letter instead of switch statement, that's because switch statement requires integer expression. But my distance is float, so that's why. But Digvijay, in your shader optimization video, you said conditional statements are bad for shader performance. Well, that is true, but in this case I don't have any choice, so I have to use them. Ok, now because I've changed the signature for SDF function, I'm getting this error in my getNormals function that I haven't passed enough arguments in SDF function. So let me declare an int variable, matID then pass it in the SDF function. I'm also getting the same error in my ray marcher. Now here I want to return that mat id to my fragment processor. So add the output parameter in the ray marcher function. Then pass it in the SDF function. Now in the fragment processor I'm getting the error that I haven't called the ray marcher with enough arguments. So let me declare an integer mat then pass it in the ray marcher function. Now here I will get the material id in this mat variable. With that, I can define different material properties for different shapes. Now here I can use switch statement because the mat is an integer. Then if the mat id is mat sphere, I want to set the red color so albedo equals vec3 of 100 zero zero and break. Same thing for the rest of the shapes. If it is a box, I want green and for capsule, I want blue color. I can also set other material properties here such as roughness, metallic, etc. And that's how we can define different material properties for different shapes. Pretty cool. Now let's say I want to texture my box with this texture. So first I need to declare a uniform. Then in the inspector, assign the texture in brick texture slot. Then in the fragment processor, here where I am setting material property for the box, I will sample the texture. And my box looks weird. That's because I am sampling the texture with the base mesh's original UVs. So just like I calculated the normals in the episode 3. I need to calculate the UVs for this particular box. I can do that with this point P. Vec2 UV equals P dot XY. Now for my box, I have set the half size to 0.5. So it is 1 meter wide in all directions. So if the box was sitting at the origin, my P dot X would be 0 at the center, 0.5 in the right side and minus 0.5 in the left side. Same thing for P dot Y. But I have moved the cube 
1 meter to the right. So currently p dot x will be 1 at the center and it will go from 0 0.5 to 1.5. So I will subtract 1 in the x component so minus vec 2 of 1 0 and let's just visualize our UV for a moment. So I have this nice UVs which has origin at the center and it goes from minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 in both x and y axis. And I can use these UVs as it is because the texture I'm working with is tileable. Otherwise I have to add 0 0.5 to my calculated UVs so that my UVs will have 0, 0 here and 1 1 here. Now I have nice UVs in front and back faces but the rest of the faces are not looking very good. So I need to calculate the UVs for those faces as well. Ok so these UVs are for XY plane so let me call it UV XY. Then for YZ plane I will go back to UV YZ equals P dot YZ. And I haven't moved the box in Y or Z axis so this will work just fine. Let's visualize that. And for the XZ plane let's go back to UV XZ equals P dot XZ. And again I've moved the box one unit in the X axis so I need to subtract that. Let's just visualize that. Now I've calculated the UVs for all three planes. I can sample my texture with those UVs. First let me sample it with XY UVs. Now I have perfect texture in front and back faces but the texture stretches on the rest of the faces. So what I want is to apply this texture only on front and back faces. I can do that using normals. I've calculated normals here but it is in view space. I need them in local space so I will just cut this and paste it here. Let's visualize the normals first. So for the front face the normal is pointing in the z axis. For the right face it is pointing in the x axis. For this face it is pointing up. The other faces looks black. Because the normals are negative there so let's just use absolute of normals. Then let's sample the texture again. Now I want to apply this texture only on xy plane. So I will multiply this entire thing with n.z. So the normal z component will be 1 only for the faces that are aligned on xy plane so I will get this. And for the yz plane I will sample the texture with yz uvs. And the same thing for the xz plane. And I have nicely textured box. And I am applying the texture along all three planes. So this is triplanar mapping in action. You can also apply other maps such as normal map, height map, etc. like this. Now let's say our box is actually a sphere. Then let's visualize the normals once again. So the sphere's normals are nicely blended like this. But I can make it tighter with the power function. n equals power of n, let's say 5. Power function simply darkens the value which are less than 1 as we increase the power. Now here if I increase the power a bit too much, I will get this black path. Because the normals x, y and z become so small that the length of the vector is not 1 anymore. For normal vector I need the length of 1. So I can divide my normal with all three components combined. Then the sample texture will look much nicer. So that's how you texture the Raymart shape. And that's pretty much the video. If you have any questions post them in the comments. If you enjoyed this video feel free to check out my other videos as well. That's it from me and I will see you guys in the next one.